This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the second of two lectures. Uh, the chapter's on interest. Uh, and in the previous lecture, I explained what we meant by compound interest and how we deal with it and how we can calculate um, how much a deposit will have grown to at the end of a period. Well, in this second lecture, we're going to effectively do it backwards and look at something called discounting. Where instead of adding on interest and finding out how much we'll have at the end of three years, five years or whatever, we effectively do it backwards. Let me explain what I mean with example five. It says, what amount now is equivalent to 800 in four years' time with interest at 10% a year? So what it's saying is, how much would we need to deposit now that at the end of four years would have grown to 800 with interest at 10%? Well, we apply exactly what we did before. Suppose it's X dollars now. If you deposited X dollars now with interest at 10%, then adding on the interest every year we'd multiply by 1 plus R, 1.10 for 10%. And we do that every year for a total year of four years, so to the power of four. And here, of course, we know what we want to end up with. We want to end up with 800. And so how much would we need to deposit now? X equals 800 divided by 1.10 to the power 4. Or it may seem a bit silly, but there's a reason for this. We tend to write it as 800 times 1 over 1 1.10 to the power 4. It's exactly the same thing. However, if you do divide by 1 1.10 to the power 4, 800 divided by 1.14 times, we get 546 to the nearest dollar. And generally, we work to the nearest dollar here, unless you're told differently. But if we were to deposit 546 now, then with interest at 10% a year, after four years, it would have grown to 546. Now you can see over the page, there is a formula for that. But if you've understood me so far, I think you really don't need the formula. Uh, the principle, the amount now, is equal to um, the amount at the end, if that's the right word, A, divided by 1 plus R to the power N, uh, where uh, R is the rate of interest, N is the number of years. However, although you must be able to use that, because doing this is such a common exercise, and it's common in the exam, to save you having to go through on your calculator, I mean, that wasn't hard, divide by 1.14 times, uh, but, you know, what happens if the interest was 8% and it was 15 years? You're having to divide by 1.08 for 8% to the power of 15. Well, I know you may have a fancy calculator, but even so, it starts taking time. Uh, in the exam, you are given tables to save you messing around with your calculator. Uh, and so if you look at the front of the notes, you'll find two sets of tables. One set is a present value table, and the other annuity table. Now I'll explain annuity table later, but the present value table, if ever we need to get the equivalent amount now, as we did there, Instead of dividing by 1.1 to the power 4, we can use these tables. And these tables give you the figure to multiply by 
For any rate of interest, as you can see, up to 20%. For any number of years, up to 15 So although what I've written on the screen is perfectly correct, the alternative to get the equivalent amount now would be to take the 800 and multiply by, well, it's four years at 10%. So we look at the 10% column on the tables, the four-year row, and you'll see a figure there of 0.683. So I do hope you've got the tables in front of you and you've checked me. 10% column, it's 10% a year, the four-year row, because it's four years, we multiply by the figures uh, in the tables, and what does it give us? Five, four, six. And so do use the tables, do. Uh, there's no point in messing around with your calculator, risking hitting the wrong button or anything. Either would be valid, but use the tables. Um, the only problem being that you can only do it for whole percentages up to 20%. And you can only do it for up to 15 years. And normally that's all you'll need. But if you were asked to do it all at 25%, you can't use tables. You would have to do it using the formula. Uh, but the formula is given you at the top. It says in the very first line of the tables, present value of 1, i.e., they write it as 1 plus r to the minus n. Uh, don't be confused. I think you should know from school that putting something to the minus power is the same as 1 over 1 plus r to the power n, which is what we were doing uh, there. We're multiplying by 1 over 1.1, because it was 10%, to the power 4, because it was 4 years. Uh, the terminology, the exercise of um, seeing how much now is equivalent to 800 in 4 years, the exercise is called discounting. We're effectively taking out the interest. And the figure we multiply by, 1 over 1 plus r to the power n, or the figure from the tables, is known as the discount factor. And the equivalent amount now, you know, we're saying, You'd have to deposit 546 now to end up with 800 in um, four years' time. The equivalent amount now is known as the present value. Uh, and check you've got it if you turn to example six. It says, what is the present value of 2,500 receivable in 12 years' time? with interest at 13% per year. Well, no problem. 1,200? To get the equivalent amount now, the amount that you'd need to deposit now to end up with 2,500, use the tables. Check the tables. It's interest at 13%. So it's a 13% column. It's for 12 years. So it's the 12 year row, and you should arrive at a figure of 0 0.231. That's the discount factor uh, for 12 years at 13%. And what does it come to? 1200 times 0.231 is 277.2. If you were to put 277 in the bank now, with interest at 13% and leave it for 12 years, at the end of 12 years, it would have grown to 1,200. 
That is the present value. So I love an exercise. By all means, check it. Uh, do it on your calculator. Discount factor. You could have done it without tables and said it's 1 over R, 1 plus R, so 1.13 to the power 12. By all means, check, and you will find you get to three decimal places, 0.231. Uh, doesn't matter, but um, seriously, I mean, you might as well use the tables. The examiner doesn't expect to use the tables unless you're asked to do something which doesn't fit in the tables. Oh, well, that's nice. Well, uh, another exercise, though, which you'll see in the next chapter uh, occurs fairly often, is something called an annuity. And an annuity is an equal amount each year. I'll show you exactly what I mean and how we deal with it. Look at example seven. Uh, it says the interest rate is 12%. It wants to know the present value of 500 receivable in one year's time and thereafter every year for a total of eight receipts. So what does that mean? We're going to get 500 in one year, but we're going to get it every year. So we're going to get it in two years, in three years, four years, five, six, seven, eight. And it wants to know the present value. And of course, there are eight of them. And what you could do is say, OK, the present value of 500 in one year, what's the discount factor? Uh, it's 12%. 12% for one year, you'd multiply by 0 0.893. And that would give you the equivalent amount now. In addition, there's 500 in two years. Well, to discount for two years at 12%, the factor is 0.797. And that would give you the present value of that 500 in two years. Uh, and again, in three years. And so on. Well, by all means, do that. But it, it's taking time, even with the tables. And of course, each time, you're multiplying the discount factor by the same amount, 500. And so there is a shortcut we can take. Instead of multiplying 500 by each of those and then adding up to get the total, we could get the same result by multiplying 500 by the total of those discount factors. Well, that may not seem to save much time, but because it's quite a common exercise, there's another set of tables you're given in the exam called the annuity tables, which will give you the total of the discount factors at any rate of interest for any number of years. So although you could continue to do what's on the screen, discount each of the eight amounts separately, it's going to be much quicker to use these second tables. The second tables, as I say, give you the total of the discount factors for any rate of interest for any number of years. And so for this one, two things. First of all, instead of listing 508 times, the way we tend to write it is say it's 500 per year, one to eight. That's a shorthand way of saying it's 500 for each of eight years. Again, instead of it multiplying by each factor individually, we'll multiply by the total discount factor or the annuity factor. Now, it's using the annuity table. What is it? It's 
the 12% column, the eight-year row, check me please, 4.968. It's the eight-year annuity discount factor at, what was the rate, 12%. And what does it come to? 500 times 4.968 is 2484. So receiving 500 each year for eight years would be equivalent to getting 2484 now. Don't forget 2484 now could be earning us interest. 500 a year, that's a total of 4,000 eight years at 500, but that includes the, all the interest. Putting 2484 in the bank now, adding on interest would effectively get us 500 a year for eight years. That is the present value. Now, do be careful in the exam, these two tables, it's very easy to pick the wrong one wrong table by mistake. The present value table is what we use when we're just discounting one amount. 500 in three years time or 600 in 10 years time and so on. The annuity table is used uh, when we're receiving an equal amount each year for several years. Okay, just one little trick that can be played on you, and be careful here. Uh, look at example eight. A man expects to receive 1,000 in each of nine years, with the first receipt being in, nine, in four years' time. So we have an annuity, an equal amount each year, and writing it down the shorthand way, it's a thousand per annum. It's the first receipt is in four years' time, uh, and it'll be for nine years in total. So we'll get it in four years five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The last receipt will be in twelve years' time. Now again, by all means, discount each one separately. Thousand for four years, thousand for five years, thousand. For... But it's messing around. It's an annuity, and we've got annuity tables. It's an equal amount each year. The only problem is this: the figures in the annuity tables they give us the total discount factor for any number of years, but always from year one onwards. So we can get uh, the total for years 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, and so on. Here, though, it's not 1 to anything, it's 4 to 12. And so we can't do that directly, but what we're going to have to do is this. We can look at the total for years 1 to 12, straight from the tables. Um, that will be the 12 year annuity factor at what's the rate of interest? Example 8, 8%. And so the total from years 1 to 12, 12 years at 8% is 7.536. But I don't want the total from 1 to 12, I want 4 to 12. That 7.536 is the total of all the factors, 1 to 12. I want the total from 4 to 12. So how can we get it? We subtract the total for 1 to 3. And of course, that we can look up as well. The annuity tables give us the total factor for any number of years from 1 onwards. And so the total for 1 to 3 is the 3-year annuity at 8%. 
Uh, from the tables, three years at 8% is 2577 Uh, and if we subtract that, we'll be left with what we want, the total factor for years 4 to 12. And so what does it come to? 7.536 minus 2.577. 4.959. So that's the total from 4 to 12. Now we can apply it to our annuity. And there we are. The present value of nine receipts of a thousand uh, at eight percent is four nine five nine. Okay, just one more bit of arithmetic to consider, and then we've got it all. And that's something called a perpetuity. And what a perpetuity is, it's on the next page, it's an equal amount each year so just like an annuity except <clears throat> instead of being an equal amount each year for 10 years, for 5 years, for 15 years, it's an equal amount each year Forever. Oh, for so long as it makes no difference. Well, how are we going to deal with it? Uh, look at example nine. What's the present value of 5,000 receivable in one year's time and thereafter in perpetuity? Well, you certainly can't do this year by year. I mean, there's no point in doing this. One. Uh, 5,000 5, in two years, 5,000 in three years, and then discount each separately. I mean, you'll be there forever, because it's going on forever. Uh, in fact, uh, sorry, and you can't use your annuity tables, because the annuity tables only go up to 15 years. This is carrying on forever. Well, the way we write it, how much was it? It's 5,000... Oh, 5,000 per annum, uh, we write it as one to infinity. 5,000 each year, forever. Uh, to discount it, there is a formula which you're going to have to learn, but it's a very easy formula. And I'll explain afterwards why it's what it is. But the discount factor is 1 over R, where R is the rate of interest. And so in this case, the interest rate is 12% or 0.12. We multiply by 1 over R, 1 over 0.12, which gives us... Oh dear, I wish I'd chosen a nicer rate, but 41,667. And there we are. Uh, now learn that, I'll say for um, individual flows, individual amounts, are f uh, we've got the present value table. For an equal amount each year, we've got the annuity table. But if it's a per perpetuity, you're not given that formula. It's easy. You multiply by 1 over R. Uh, I'll tell you why, uh, if you like to make sense of it. Suppose I'm married, or I was married, but we've now divorced, uh, and I've agreed to pay my ex-wife 5,000 a year forever. Or well, you know, for so long, this might as well be forever. Um, but I don't want to, I don't have any contact with her. I'd rather just forget her completely. I found out that um, the bank is paying 12% a year interest. And so rather than have to pay her 5,000 a year forever, why don't I just put 41,000 in a bank account now in her name? 
and that will earn her interest 41667 at 12%. It'll earn 5,000 a year. And it won't compound. I mean, the 5,000 each year will get paid to her. But the two would be equivalent. Putting one amount now, the present value, at interest of 12% will be effectively the same as giving her 5,000 a year forever. Anyway, there are the techniques we need for discounting. In the next chapter, uh, I'll show you how we use those techniques in what we call investment appraisal.